Sanbonan hi kamala mupenyi wal the black pen. Namtlanje nzo bengi nfundela nje i klip. Ma pepa ndaba. Engwa tolile namtlanje. Ngalulu tabel shanga nisa u munga mele uske sabanae. U Jacob Zuma. Nomlu mwagi wa mnige zimali e nga mo 500,000. Ukuta wazu yengkanto ole ayolo nga makala. Ashanga neno Karen Mohan. No Billy Downer. Just to kick off. I'd like to thank my sponsor for today's video, Usfi Sonjovu, who wrote me a quite a great piece and I want to read it for you guys today. Usfi Sonjovu sends this to me. He owns a company called Balungisi Solutions. We are Balungisi Solutions. We deal with barcode scanners and barcode printers, mainly used in warehouses, retail and distribution centers. We are an official Zebra and Honeywell Productivity Channel partner and deal with Honeywell, Zebra, Datalogic, and other brands of barcode printers and scanners. We have a highly skilled and experienced team to service, maintain, and supply new hardware at the lowest price. On average, we are cheaper than our competitors. Our core client base that we serve works in distribution, manufacturing, as well as retail. We are available 24-7. Please feel free to contact them for any additional information you may require I'm going to be dropping their email address and their website below. He writes at the end, and this is why I actually wanted to read this. I hope this will reach the likes of Morefire, Batu, Drip, Amakosa, and all other black-owned companies that have warehousing and distribution centers that I need to support another black brother since this industry or line of work is white-dominated. I'm not using this as a color thing. All I'm saying is please give us a chance we are serious about exceptional service. We are qualified and eager to show others that this is possible. We want to expand and share the skill with our own. I think that's quite an impassioned plea and uh, very noteworthy. Uh, transformation is important and it is important that we empower people of other races that may have been left out, especially from the legacies of apartheid and today because of the gatekeeping of our current black government. Thank you so much to Sfiso Ndlovu uh, of Balung Isi Solutions. They deal with barcode scanners and barcode printers that are mainly used in warehouses, retail and distribution centers. And they sponsored today's video. I will be dropping their email addresses below as well as their website as well. Uh, the article, the first article I'm going to be reading, actually it's only one article. Ek wil sê, ek wou hier die articles in Afrikaans lees, maar as ek na netwerk24.com gaan, it's by our seer. Okay, let me read this thing for you because it's sad for me that, you know, with the English aspect, you can find some of these articles on IOL and other platforms. With Afrikaans people, it seems like they kind of forced to subscribe. And it seems like netwerk24.com is the only platform that they can find like this type of news. So you kind of have to be a subscriber in Afrikaans called a, a, a intiakanar for you to read some of these stories. So for Afrikaans people that are not subscribers, whether they don't have money or they just don't want to subscribe, they get kept out of stories like this and then you get bias reporting. This article was on the 18th October geskryf dier Anjene Burger and Janne van der Merwe. The DA wil hoofdtoe oor Louis Liebenbergse verachtelike uitlatings. En dan skryf dit hier, kry die volle story tekenen op netwerk24 en kry vandag onbeperkte toegang tot gehalte journalistiek prekende nies voorste Afrikaanse korante en tijdskrifte, blits, video inhoud, potsjendings, luisterboeken en meer. As jy reeds in een inteker is, meld aan. Ek het een ander artikel gegeven gekry, ook by netwerk24.com, geskryf op die 16e oktober, dier Johan Eibers en Pieter Stein. Zuma sa pel in storm, oor die kei woord, en nog steeds, kry die volle story teken in op netwerk24, so ja, baie teleergesteld, so I'll have to read this in English, because again, you find on news24.com uh, that you have to kind of sign up. But this is from businesslife.co.za. Shout out to them. 
written by Unati Nkanjini. Hanukom Slam's alleged racist rant or rant by Zuma Becker Liebenberg. The Tarot is a criminal offense from which the former president's supporters should distance themselves. Former minister says, written on the 17th of October, 2022. Former tourism minister and ANC stalwart Derek Hanukom has weighed in on an alleged racist rant by Jacob Zuma's benefactor, Louis Liebenberg. The alleged rant was reported by a report and circulated online at the weekend. In it, the controversial diamond dealer allegedly said the then apartheid government should have wiped out Soweto with an atomic bomb. Liebenberg can also be heard using the K-word frequently. The businessman claimed the voice notes containing the alleged rant or rant were manipulated by his enemies. His lawyer later said the recordings were fabricated. Anukom said the rant was a criminal offense and Zuma's supporters should distance themselves from the controversy. We cannot tolerate such racism in our country. It is a criminal offense. Surely even Zuma supporters would want to distance themselves from this. Or are they all captured by whoever gives them money? He asked. Liebenberg's last week, Liebenberg last week pledged 500,000 rand to fund the former president's private prosecution of National Prosecuting Authority, the NPA advocate Billy Downer and News24 journalist Karen Mohan. According to reports, Liebenberg and Zuma have been close for some time. Earlier this year, he gifted Zuma two Nguni cows and last month he attended the Supreme Court of Appeal hearing in which Zuma appealed against a ruling by the Pretoria High Court declaring the decision by former prison's boss Arthur Fraser to grant him medical parole unlawful. In July 2021, Liebenberg had 100 million rand in assets frozen by the NPA after allegations of money laundering and running a Ponzi scheme. Speaking on SAFM, Liebenberg said God told him to give Zuma half a million rand and visit his Nkandla home. I've been praying and fasting about this and then I felt I should go to Nkandla. I went without any planning. It's not that I had, it's not that I had long friendship with the former president. But I felt that this country is in trouble and we cannot afford another uprising, like in Durban, he said. Liebenberg said that during this one and a half hour visit, he spoke to Zuma about Afrikaners, farm murders, corruption, criminality, and a possible uprising. When asked if any terms and conditions were attached to the 500,000 rand donation, Liebenberg said the public should be less worried about the donation and more by the state of the nation. You care about 500,000 rand for a man that has been unjustifiably hunted down by state security, by everybody, by President Cyril Ramaphosa and by the Constitutional Court, and you worry about 500,000 rand. A normal citizen with a good heart would go, a rescue, would go and rescue a person who has never been proven that is guilty, Liebenberg said. What's quite, what's quite sad for me, because I did listen to the voice notes, it's quite long, it's quite passionate, uh, it's quite triggering, What's sad is that it's largely in Afrikaans. So for people that don't understand Afrikaans, they will miss it out. The sad thing is that it has not been translated as far as I know into English. And not only translated directly, because one of the things you need to learn, and you know, uh, Mac G and Saul will speak about this on podcast and chill on Monday, uh, referencing Kairos one. If you only understand one language, and ironically, I had this conversation with my mother over the weekend. If you only understand one language, you miss out on so many cultures, myths, um, nuances, experiences in other languages. You know, when they say, they basically say you cannot translate certain feelings and emotions and understandings. And when you don't understand Afrikaans and Afrikaans culture, you will miss out on some of the things he says because Louis Liebenberg in, in his passion speaks about obviously racially the Kafirs, or he speaks about the Conte, he speaks about the Pus, very deep swear words, very racist terms as well. Um, but you'd have to understand in the concept context of our history and Afrikaans people where that comes from. I'm not defending him. He needs to be taken to the Human Rights Commission, if that is indeed his voice. He needs to be um, fined or jailed for using a slur word which is not allowed it's not legally allowed there was a lady who was i forgot her name now i know penny sparrow at some point for using these derogatory words they were fined. they were jailed the same thing must happen to louis liebenberg if this voice note is his 
But I will say this, growing up in Newcastle, where I experienced a lot of racism, called the Kafir, especially because I played a lot of rugby, there'd be times when, after rugby games, we're supposed to shake hands with the opposition. These white racist boys would, after the game, shake all the white guys' hands, and then would always skip your hand when you're a black person, and you'd feel the racism. On the field, they would want to tackle you harder, they would speak to you in Afrikaans, because they'd assume that maybe you don't understand, or they'd want to put you in your place. So it is a very triggering and emotive word. But if you spend time in those spaces, you understand that for normal white Afrikaans people, they actually split, and this is funny, they split black people into Swartis and Kafirs. And to them, Swartis are normal, decent black people, and the Kafirs are the ones who are bad. It's almost the same way black people today will speak about black consciousness and pro-black people. They'll speak about woke black people, and then they'll speak about the sellouts and the clever blacks, etc. Because black people themselves class each other. It may not be using derogatory uh, terms that are unconstitutional, but they also judge each other as well. Of course, we've got tri uh, tribalistic sentiments, and then we've obviously got xenophobic and especially Afrophobic, where we speak about Amakrikamba, or we speak about Amakwerekwere, relating to foreigners that are, that are from African nations in this country. The second thing is when you listen to this voice note, which, if you understand Afrikaans, Louis Liebenberg is going for everyone, boy. Yes, he attacks black people, but in the same breath, he calls out a lot of Afrikaans leaders who are in special, unique positions and how they have failed to transform the country, to transform the economy. He speaks about um, sommige uh, leader van die banken that are busy creating spaces where, and he speaks about this in Afrikaans, where he speaks about belastings and all these things, and the Arama Mensa. He says poor South Africans, in essence, are investing their monies with these banks who are offering something silly like 5% a year. And then after they take their interests and their fees, the poor investors are left with 3.5% in an economy that has an inflation rate of 6%. So the people are in effect, and I think he does use the word raped. The people are being raped. And not only by these people, he also speaks about the 0.1%, the 0.1% of the world, the elite, who are constantly coming to take from South Africa and from the African continent. And how sad it is that um, Afrikaners, mensa wat in hulle vaderland geboed, people that in their fatherland, because they see South Africa as their fatherland, they see Africa as their fatherland, that have come to build this nation, are the ones that are dragged, that wake up every day, you know, the Bura, the farmers that go and farm and grow food, the mensa wat bo, the mensa wat dinge doen en winkels um, bestuur, People that run shops and businesses, etc. And how they are attacked in this country where they are trying to build something. And how they don't give a fuck about the rest of the world because the world doesn't care. He of course speaks about the RN fucking seer. <laughs> the ANC and how corrupt it is. And how it has failed the people he's meant to be leading. It's very interesting that he finds some type of link to ex-president Jacob Zuma. And he feels that Jacob Zuma has been unfairly been treated. By the leadership of this country and how he felt a need and he got a message from God to go and support him. Could he be lying? And could this be just another form of bribery, trying to capture the ex-president, trying to maybe look good, public relations, etc. You know, or does he genuinely feel like, but no one is supporting this guy? Where are his supporters? You know, where are Jacob Zuma's fans on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram that are constantly being woke? Are they putting in a hundred rand, five hundred rand, a thousand rand to say? President Zuma, please go in. And we don't know, I don't know if Vivian Reddy, for example, and shout out to Vivian Reddy and um, what's his wife's name? She's on The Real Housewives of Durban. Surisha. You know, if uh, shout out to them for the new hotel they've opened in Umhlanga. Um, But we don't know if they fund, I don't even know if they're still friends because this is the other interesting thing. I may be funded by someone back in the day because our interests aligned and now my interests have changed. And someone who funded me back in the day doesn't fund me anymore. Is the Sheikh family, people like Shabir and Mo Sheikh, are they assisting Zuma with some of his cases? Are some of his ANC comrades assisting him? Are some of the people that claim that they they pro Zuma, hey, when they know Zuma, are they supporting him? Or is it going to take a wealthy Afrikaans, white Afrikaans man like this to support him? In the same way I've been dragged for putting my 100 rand into Afri Forum, who have gone to help the Senzo Mayua family. And my question has been, has Orlando Pirates, has Bafana Bafana, have Pirates fans and Bafana fans and other black people, have they contributed 10 rand, you know, to the plight of the Mayor family? 
Do they contribute 10 rand, 50 rand to some of these pro-black initiatives? Do they contribute money to Andile Mutama and the BLF who claim they want expropriation without compensation? Sometimes it's cute to make noise on social media. A social media that is not even pro-black, it's not even pro-South African. It's very nice to make noise on YouTube channels, which are not even African or South African. But then you bash people that are actually doing something to try and help the causes of moving this country forward. Very interesting thoughts. Um, very interesting case of Jacob Zuma taking on Karen Mohan and Billy Downer. And this is going to be interesting to see how this pans out. I, I've heard rumors that he's, he's representing himself. We're going to see how that goes. I have huge issues with our legal system in this country. I feel it's biased against the poor. I feel only the, the rich and the elite and the powerful and the connected get to benefit. Easy example, if you're poor and you don't have bail money, you sit in jail. If you have some money and you have bail money, all of a sudden. If you're poor, you have to use illegal aid, which is over inundated, you know, with a heavy workload and a backlog. Versus if you have money, you go and you pay for an expensive lawyer. Of course, we've seen the Dalimpof, advocate Dalimpofos of this world, the Utemba, Mugai Tobi, Temba Utembele. I just, I don't want to mess up his name. Tembe and Nogai Tobi. These guys are very expensive. Of course, your Harinels, of course, your uh, Barry Roos, they're expensive. Extremely expensive. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands for them to take up your case. Some of them do it pro bono because it helps them uh, get PR work out there. It makes them create goodwill. And obviously, from a legacy perspective, they will be written about in the history books. Advocate Dalim Pofu was representing Jacob Zuma when this happened. Tembegangurai Tobi, Harinel, Bereru, etc. You know, um, and obviously we now have an advocate, <laughs> Divo, who has been trending. And uh, the other advocate, uh, it was with Divo and uh, there was an amazing lady that was there. Or well, that is there in that case. I just want to find her name. Sorry. May you uh, case... Female advocate. Is it no? Or Zandilem Shololo. Advocate Zandilem Shololo. Shout out to her, especially for rep representing females uh, at that level. Um, these people are very expensive. Our legal systems are biased. I believe our constitution is broken. And South Africans, once they become politically literate, I'm hoping will become legally literate, will become economically literate, and then will become more hands on in dismantling and breaking and editing how justice is served in this country, how politicians are placed in this country, how politicians are held accountable in this country. Rob Hersoff and some of his mates have built NewSouthAfrica.org, you know, which is meant to use blockchain to be transparent to hold politicians accountable. So we don't have situations like Cyril Ramaphosa underhandedly behind the scenes, changing the ministerial handbook so that our politicians can laugh at the thoughts of using public health care. Very sad. We're going to see how this goes. Uh, shout out to Louis Liebenberg. Again, if you can get the voice note and if you understand Afrikaans, please listen to it. Yes, there's racism there and it must be taken to the Human Rights uh, Commission. But there are many important, powerful facts there. I am not a binary person. I am not black and white. I understand different shades of grey. And I know that you can take some of the good and relevant and truthful points from some, someone even if they may be deemed to be racist or racial in certain aspects as well. Let's learn and become dynamic in our thinking. Let's become critical thinkers, independent thinkers, and let's fight for a better country, better continent, and a better world. Pen you well, the black pen. Um, needs. What's needs in Afrikaans? Anyways, this nation needs us to work harder. Ngalubonga won't come on to on support you on this channel. Being sent and join, and if I'm a member, cool. I'm a video corner. If partner paluguti joining, I join a lapo. Nia kids good in funu gung niggas a mali nut and kubeg and the lumsebens and wins are. Um, the other cool thing which I really hope I'll get to at some point, and I'm begging you guys if you have the know how or if you know someone, I would like to take some of the videos that I've made. Number one, I need to take these videos onto podcasts. Spotify, Buzzsprout, uh, iTunes, etc. We need to move this onto audio so that people can listen to it while they're doing something else or while they're driving. The second thing is I need you guys who are translators to come in and translate some of these videos into, in South Africa uh, particularly, in, into Isi Zulu, into Afrikaans. Um, I think Isi Zulu's closer will kind of be covered. Afrikaans will be great. 
and then if we can translate them into Swahili and French for the African continent. And then sooner rather than later, it would be nice to dub these into Mandarin and Spanish as very huge languages which affect the world at large. I think that's pretty dope work we can do together. I can take the little bit of money I make on YouTube. We can build a team, a WhatsApp group. You guys can do some of the work and then we can translate, we can dub and we can get some of these messages out into the world. It will hopefully draw a continental audience towards this channel and some of maybe the other channels that I work on and it will draw a global audience as well. I think it will be pretty dope to translate the work that we're doing to get our messages and our stories out there. Just as the Bible has been translated into all the languages, um, just as best-selling books such as The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho uh, have been done as well. I think we can get our voices out there. Penuel the Black Pen, Netwerk 24.com Please can you guys allow people to get their news without having to subscribe. And this is a challenge to other Afrikaans people to be like, guys, please create alternative media streams. There are a lot from the English perspective. Some want you to subscribe, some don't. But clearly there's a monopoly when it comes to Afrikaans niece. And maybe this is a challenge to Zulu news as well. I know Kona Ilanga, Kona Isolezu. But there's a challenge for more alternative media platforms. It can't just be that the news is in English with 20 publications. But then there's one for Afrikaans. And then there's maybe two for Isi Zulu and for some of the other languages. We've got Ukozi FM. We've got Ikakasi. We need more Zulu challenge, 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 channels. Challenge, 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 challenge. We need more Zulu channels, radio stations. We've got um, we need more Kosa, we need more Sutu, we need more Pedi. And it's a challenge to you guys, especially with these platforms we have, which is video cast on YouTube, for example. And then we've got podcasting, Spotify, Buzzsprout. It's your challenge, guys, to go and create in your indigenous languages so that we can reach the people. I obviously wish all people could speak English because that's my language of choice. The British colonized me well, and I would like to carry on and colonize others further. But the reality is there are a lot of people who need this information, especially leading up to the 2024 elections. Pen you all the black pen. Hit it.